time until next election to promise that, by the way, we couldn't do that. No. Municipal is a basic, is in a service. We don't have to wait until the uh, next election to execute. So, if I'm elected, I, I'm going to be, first of all, present, I'm going to be uh, approachable, and I'm going to listen. And then, together, we're going to do it, but it won't take months and years. Thank you, Ms. Montgomery. Thank you. So congratulations for coming here today, and um, you're obviously examples of uh, what youth centers can do. I'd be very interested in your dance program. I've been looking for one myself. Um, Mr. Copeman, I think one of the things we need to invest in right away is a good sound system for this <laughs> building. Maybe we could start there. Jim, it's not an auditorium. Okay, but come in. Um, I, Mr. Copeman suggests that we build a new building for the youth when we have many buildings sitting empty that are crumbling because of lack of attention by this borough. Or they sell the building off. One example is the Snowden Theater. We don't know, it's been sold on conditions. We don't know what the conditions are because once again, there's no transparency. So, what I would suggest is that we take a look at the buildings we have, we match up the needs to the communities, community groups, and we get going on it. Mr. Copeman's had four years. We're, we're tired of having meetings. We want some action. I would like to remind the audience that uh, to hold your applause until the end of the event, please. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll move on to our next question uh, from uh, Deborah Fogel. And we're going to do this very delicately. Okay, well. <laughs> okay we're good. Um, in all honesty, I, or in all transparency, I live in an OSBO. I'm GRTs, I'm on an anti-poverty committee at Project Genesis, and I was looking at your plot for both Pour de Montréal and Equipe Godea, your, um, what your, your proposals on housing, and uh, one thing that struck me was that the, in any case, the Equipe Godea was talking about working with GRTs and uh, OSBLs had to have a minimum of 750 social housing units within the next four years. And I know Project Montréal is talking 20% social housing in any development, which is very nice. But considering that in 2013, just four years ago, there were 2,483 households, that is families, not individuals, looking for social housing in the area, somehow 750 in four years' time, between now and what, 2022? Doesn't seem like quite enough. Uh, also, as I said, I, I had experience work dealing with the OMH. Uh, what will you do to increase the stock of social housing, improve the stock of social housing, and perhaps create, uh, streamline the situation uh, for applying to subsidized housing in the area? Thank you very much. We'll start with uh, Mr. Gavician. Uh, it's a good example that you bring up tonight. And uh, again, I have to repeat that uh, it's not only uh, to be elected and get the, the power, but it's uh, also the, the, the way that to execute. I think Mr. Kaufman is uh, in charge of, in the city of Montreal, housing and uh, urbanism. And uh, as in French they said, he's a cordonnier mal chaussé. Alors, <laughs> it's, uh, il est en charge, mais son arrondissement souffre de, de, de 
maison euh, sociale ou euh, fortement. Alors, euh, c'est dommage, c'est vraiment euh, impossible de croire qu'il y a 2800 quelques euh, ménages qui attendent d'avoir des maisons pour vivre dans la dignité et qu'on leur donne, la seule chose qu'on leur offre, c'est des promises, giving promises. Et uh, this election, it's, uh, we're going to do it next Monday, this and that. This is uh, out of imagination. And if I'm elected, I'm, I said, it's my duty as a mayor of this borough to make better living of the citizen of this borough and take care of their needs. And uh, you don't, I don't want to deceive you. And uh, I'm going to do my best to, uh, I don't think I'm going to do 2,800 uh, social houses, but more than half of this is possible to do. Thank you. Ms. Montgomery. On a une crise dans cet arrondissement uh, au niveau de logement, je sais. And it's been going on for a long time and getting worse by the years. I think, um, as we all know, housing is a human right. And I'm a human right defender. And I will do everything in my power to go to the federal and provincial governments and get us funding for subsidized housing and affordable housing. We also need to fix the apartments we have. We need to come down hard on slumlords. We need to have inspectors. We need to follow up on those inspections and make sure they're not just painting over the mold. People have a right to clean, safe housing. Everyone has that right. And we have a plan, Projet Montréal, for the area of the Hippodrome, where we are going to build housing, but not just housing, but an actual neighborhood where you, there will be daycare, a daycare school, where people can live in dignity. So that basically is, is my plan. I uh, commit, I commit to finding housing or to, to working with the federal and provincial governments to make sure there's affordable housing in this borough for everyone who needs it. Thank you, Mr. Coburn. I was looking through the Projet Montréal program. Um, uh, I was also, I mean, it's, it's almost impossible to find the Coalition Montreal program, but at least the Projet Montréal program is there. Je l'ai regardé. Uh, L'équipe Coderre est la seule partie politique qui a osé chiffrer le nombre d'unités en logement so social et abordable dans la campagne électorale. 5000 pour la ville de Montréal. 5 000 pour la ville de Montréal, c'est plus que ce qui a été développé annuellement depuis plus de 15 ans. Avant cet automne, les unités en logement social et abordable étaient attribuées par, la, par le gouvernement du Québec. It was the government of Quebec who determined how many units we got up until this fall. With the historic transfer of budget and money, and responsibilities to the city of Montreal, we will now be determining the number of units within a framework that's given by the, uh, uh, the National Assembly. At 5,000 units, it's one of the most ambitious targets to develop social housing in the, in the city of Montreal. Projet Montréal didn't have the courage to, to indicate the number of the social housing units, nor did Coalition Montreal. We talk also locally about a minimum of 750 units, excluding blue bonnets, 
excluding blue bonnets, and that number could increase with the application of the our our politique d'inclusion, our stratégie d'inclusion. So you know, Mr. Gavidian is apparently in his back pocket has a magic wand. He's going to fix that. He's, he's Harry Potter. He's just going to wave his magic wand and fix all these things that that we have been, according to him, unable to address in the last four years. It takes a little bit more than a magic wand, ladies and gentlemen, to, to really address these issues. You have to approach it with, with, uh, with Thank you, rigor Mr. and Coleman, seriousness, Mr. Coleman, and, that's, your time and that's what we're going to do. Thank you very much. I'll move on to our next question now. Um, and our three next questions following this are from... Oh, there we go. <laughs> Uh, uh, les prochaines questions sont de Robin Edgar, uh, Robert Dussault, et Susan Perry. Uh, 